Hi everybody, welcome back to character design. We're going to be talking about how to do a turnaround today. Uh, there are two different types of turnarounds. I'm going to show you those two types of turnarounds. Okay, number one, if we go over and we don't look at the Apple Watch, but if we look at our blog site, okay, and we scroll down here, um, I show you some samples. Now, most of the samples right here, these are what I call, okay, animated related turnarounds and the difference okay I'm also work as a 3d modeler so there's a huge difference to me as a 3d modeler I'm gonna get an orthographic turnaround an orthographic turnaround is gonna have a front side and back view I'm gonna show that to you in just a second on a flat horizon line the difference with with working in animation as you can see the feet will change in, in the characters existing on a ground plane, for example, like right here. I'm going to draw on top of this in just a second. So I want you to be able to recognize the differences. Okay, For example, I can see this foot here. I can go over to the left-hand side. That character is therefore sitting on a grid plane. We will talk about that, and we will do one of those as our next sort of time in this project. I used to give them both to you at the same time and that confused students so I'm going to do one at a time. The first project is going to be a base turnaround okay and it's just going to be using a, what we call like I call it a straight line method it's a flat front view okay. Um, these other approaches are great for a designer because once we get to the point where we take a character and we have to start doing gesture poses and emotional poses you have to understand how your character is standing on a perspective grid and existing in, in a world, okay? Then we have, an under, we have a better idea of the distribution of weight, we know how the feet are attaching, and most importantly, we can understand the center line. The center line is the mass of a person's body. Your center line is re responsible for how your balance is adjusted. In fact, if I know you can't see this on the demo, but if I stand up right now, and if I put my feet out wide like I'm surfing, Right? I'm doing that to adjust my center line mass to weight out. So if you see somebody walk on a, trape a trapeze rope, right, they put their arms out and they're balancing themselves to keep their center line straight. Okay? Once you offset someone's center line, and that's as easy as someone pulling up their foot and then you push them to one side, you know, offset the center line, they're going to fall immediately. Okay? How does that tie in and how does that affect with what we're going to do inside a turnaround. Well that's one of the immediate approaches that we want to do is we want to be able to look at our work and we want to be able to figure out, I'm going to cover all this in a minute, I'm going to sort of go back and forth there. I'm going to draw on top a couple of these sketches, okay? Talk about some basics here that are happening. Let me get my little pencil brush here, okay? And um, we're going to talk about center lines, what the center line and the figure is doing. Now, let me go through a couple of these samples, okay? Here's a good sample of a turnaround where it's just front side orthographic view provided for a modeler. There's a back view. Now here's how I know, here's the difference, is that if I were to come on top of this, if I were to add another layer, take my brush here, and if I draw, hold on a minute, brush 100%, okay there we go. So if I come in here and if I draw a couple lines, these are called guidelines, okay. So if I take my guidelines now and I start intersecting the head, I start intersecting the chin. See what's happening? The chin here is on the same line as the chin right there. Okay, All these lines become consistent. Look at where the fingers end. Do you see that? The fingers end right here and right here. Look at where the wrist is. This is a great example of a solid turnaround. Okay, The wrist is all on that same guideline, isn't it? Okay, If I come over here, even if it get really picky, like look at the the top of this mark right here. So that's not even the elbow. Let's say the elbow is about there. And I'm not drawing perfectly straight lines. I wish I could. I'm using shift on Photoshop, right? Look at the top of that mark. Look at that. It hits right there on the top of that mark. So not only do we want to get the prime axis lines of our character down, it's also what I call like the secondary traits. It might be a little clump of hair. It might be a little part of a shield. It could be the top of a sword. All that has to be represented. Okay, like for example here. See this little point here that comes up? If I follow that across, wouldn't you know it happens to hit exactly in the same view? Okay, this is the front view. This is the reverse. I don't know whose this is. I grabbed it offline, but it's a really nice turnaround. It's nicely done. Okay, it has a lot of great information there. 
this is the information that a modeler wants, okay, to model something. All right, hold on a minute. Let's jump over here and look at this. This is not, this is an animation turnaround. How do I know that? Look at the feet right here. Do you see this? So I'm going to draw on top of this and explain the differences. This one, the character is existing on a ground plane. If I come in here and lightly sketch, that character is on some form of a ground plane there. How do I know that? Because one foot is hitting here, another foot is hitting here. There's a distance between those two. Right here, there's a distance between those two. Okay, look at right here. The distance between there to there, and then if I find the middle of that distance from A to B and come up, that middle point should be exactly where the top of the hips are, right over. That's that part I was just talking about with the character's balance and the center line axis that's there, okay? So look at here, if I come over here and I find that distance from that leg to that leg, I come from the middle and I come up, I should be hitting exactly that middle section. That is somebody who has had an animation background that knows how to draw a turnaround of a character correctly using shape and perspective to mimic that. This will be the second part of our assignment. I don't want to confuse you. Last semester I had people jump into this right away and they confuse the difference between the two. Okay, so again, this is the second part. So if I come by and I see the space between the feet like that, you're doing it incorrectly. That's the second part. What we're going to be doing is an assignment like this. We're going to be looking at our character and we're going to be drawing lines across that are going to be the perfect intersection line. So if the hips intersect, they intersect at one point, they intersect on the next drawing. You're going to be providing me a front okay a rear and a side view of your character okay so the first thing that I like to do now some of you have drawn your characters in a three-quarter view okay there's nothing wrong with that you can decipher that information that's taking place there's another one that's nicely done they also rendered it in tone which is really nice looks like it's for a feature production right the first thing that we want to do this is where I'm going to go back and talk about actually I had goofy up here Where's my Goofy? Where are you? Oh, that was another one. That's another one. Thought I had Goofy here. Sorry, one second. Is this it? Nope, that's Prime. Maybe I lost Goofy here. Give me a second. Let me get him back here. This is a very nicely done turnaround here. Um, where'd he go, Goofy? Where are you? I'm looking on my other page here that's open. Here he is. Here. And that's why I went to grab Goofy and it grabbed the one underneath it, which was Pocahontas. And it keeps grabbing Pocahontas. Oh, this is annoying. One second. Aha, I got Goofy here. I can drop on our icon. There we go. So here's Goofy. Okay. If your character is already drawn in a three quarter view, you now have to translate him into a front, side, and rear view. So what you want to do, this is where you take little measurements. Okay, and I'm going to go over some of those measurements. Those measurements have to deal with understanding the middle axis lines on a character. So watch what I'm going to do to Goofy right here. Let's say your character is drawn in a three-quarter view like this. That's how I've been asking most of you to design your characters, right? So we have more of a sense of... Um, form and shape with your character, right? So all we have to do is come on your character here. Step one, you want to draw an intersection line and you want to understand, okay, where his center mass is and where these lines are. Because then if we draw lines back and forth, so what do we know right now? We know the middle of Goofy is right here. You see that? We have a center line that's right here. That center line comes up, and even if I were to dissect him, imagine if I killed Goofy with a large steak knife, right? And I put a big spike through him right there, okay? And now if I come forward, look at his head. Goofy's head comes forward in this direction, and then where his nose is, if I drop a dotted line coming down here, okay, right to here. So what does that mean? That means Goofy's head actually comes that far forward over his feet. So if I were to draw Goofy from a side view right now and come over and here he is, he just happens to be in a side view, you can compare that. You can see where his neck is right here and I drop that center line down to the base of his feet. You can see 
how far Goofy's head pops outward. And if I draw a dotted line down, I can see the relationship of the feet to that. Actually, I can see that Goofy's head actually comes out a pronounced difference, okay, from here to here, more than the foot. And if I look here, wouldn't you know, look at that, see that? It's actually coming out that same pronounced difference. The difference is it's been turned. So what I want you to do, step one, is you pick a character that you like, okay? We don't want to take complex characters. We want to go with a more simpler character. We don't want a round character like Pac-Man. That's too easy. We want a character. You guys have designed a bunch of different characters, okay, that is standing on two legs that has arms, okay? Water buffalo, elephant, that can be a little bit harder with an anthropomorphic character that's, that's going from front to side view. Let's just start with sort of an elevated human character similar to like Goofy here, okay? First thing I want you to do is I want you to divide up the center line and I want you to think about these proportions. Proportion number one, where's the center line? Proportion number two, where does that center line hit the ground? That way when I go to translate this drawing into a side view, I have an understanding of where the top of the hips are, where the bottom of the hips are, where the top of the hand is. I have an understanding where the, the bottom of the chin is where the top of the head is. Do you see now how Goofy is drawn absolutely correctly here? Because as I'm drawing these horizontal lines here, they're all matching up, okay? That's gonna be your first guideline in the step, is you're gonna take one of your characters, draw a center line, plot it down to the ground. Your character's probably already done in a three-quarter. Now we're gonna work backwards a little bit and we're gonna break down these proportions right here, okay? So then you're gonna draw these lines going sideways. That allows us now to come in and to produce an orthographic view, okay? Um, in your orthographic view of your character, go back to the other one I had here. Hold on a minute. Goofy, what else was? Let me see here. This is the one we were looking at earlier, okay? That it's drawn pretty accurately, right? You're just going to come in here, and you're going to start. You're going to draw a line for the ground plane, okay? Go straight across. So yeah, this, the, foot, the foot is hitting right here. Here it's a little off, that's okay. And you're gonna come over here and you're gonna draw a line that goes straight across for the head plane, okay? We're not gonna see the feet turning on a grid plane, are we in this? No, this is a direct orthographic view. So you can label the first one front, and then you can label the side view and the reverse view. And the first thing you're gonna start doing is then you're gonna start making these little trace lines. I highly recommend, I'm doing this in red on the demo for you. I highly recommend that you use a very light color, like a light blue, to create these guidelines, okay? So look, if I come over here, here's, I might make the top line and the bottom line a little bit thicker, right? And then all the other interior lines I make smaller. So here's an example, I hold shift. I know the head is gonna be right there. I know the chin is ending right there, okay? I know that the hips, the torso is ending right here. It's ending right there. I know the hands are ending right there. You can t I know the knees are right here. I know the knee cap details right there. I know the ankles are about right there. See, keep making these lines. And as you start to draw, you're going to start with simple shapes. Don't start doing this. This is where Phil's going to yell at you. If I come by and I see you doing this. That's wrong. We're not starting with contour lines, we're starting with shape. You're looking at your character in a three-quarter view and you're now translating them over, okay? So if I come back over here, here might, this might be your character in your three-quarter view, right? I'm only using red because it's easier to see on the monitors. But let's say if I were to go to like a light blue, like this. Pick a blue, that's a dark blue, we're gonna go downward, sort of washed out. Now if I come across here, okay, so this is the first stop first step for you guys, right? Hold on, that's too light. Let me switch to this. This is why I like to use red. It's just easier to see. First step, understand where that center line of the character is. What is happening to that body shape, okay? I mean, this is like figure drawing 101. Even if I were to cut her in half, so to speak, this is huge, because look at that arch in the back. Do you see that? 
now I can look at that arch. Look, if I have a straight line right here going down to the ground, which there would be, okay, between the legs, and it'll go down. So if her other foot was down, that would be the center line between both feet. Okay, that's how the human body's built. That's how it works. Okay, hold on a minute. I accidentally made a mistake, and I meant to be drawing on another layer, and I didn't. Let me switch to another layer. There we go. Okay, so I have the center line in there. I understand her head shape. I understand where her body is, and this is where we start to transfer. We look at the chin. Okay, look at the top of the head. We look at the shoulders. Okay, she has one shoulder higher than another there, right? Look at that mark. Look at that shoulder there. What do you know? Look at that. It hits right on target. Okay? So I'm going to keep going down. Your goal is to produce these orthographic views here. Front, side, back. The easiest way to start is to start with the center line. Understand what's happening in this character. Is this character standing straight right now? She sort of is from her center mass here, but then look at what's happening. Her back is arching a little bit at an angle. Do you see that? So on that side view, that's where you can come in here and you can say, okay, I know her hips are right about there. I know she's going straight, but then look, then she's arching at an angle. Do you see that? That's representing what's happening right here in the top of this turnaround. Okay, are you with me? All right? Okay, good. I'm going to delete some of these. The first thing that I like to do before, I know some of you are going to start going all line crazy. That's fine. Do the lines on a separate layer. That way you can get rid of them. So I might come over here real lightly and I might do this. I might say ankle, knee, other knee, hips, waist, chin. Oops, I missed that one. Chin, top of head top a hat okay that's pretty easy right the next phase on another layer is I'm gonna to go to shape then I'm gonna look at this shape of her of her head and then I'm gonna come over I'm gonna look for the main center line the center line of that shape is tilted it's going at that angle okay so when I get to the side view then I know that her head shape is gonna be something like this tilted at a little angle like that Okay, look at the body shape. This particular character, little, excuse me, particular character has a thinner waist right here. So I can draw a line across. I know that's about where her waist should be. It should be thinner there, and then her shoulders should be thicker. So I can match up shoulder distances off the drawing. And again, I'm going for shape. I'm going for head mass. Head mass one. Then I'm going for, look at the shape right here. That comes in, pinches to the waist. It's like a trapezoid, right? Then her pelvic bone, obviously, this is basic drawing, figure drawing 101, is in the shape of a diamond. So I could come over here and I can translate that same thing. It's easy to do it here because you see the sample of the drawing underneath it. But I'm going head shape, center mass, straight down, and then her hips. These hips are, hips are lightly tilted a little bit. The right hip is lower than the left hip. Right hip here is lower than the left hip there. That's fine. I could make I sure I had that represented here. So when I'm done and turn this off, this is what I this is what you should have. Before you start any of the contour line, you should have these basic shapes. Okay? She then has a, a tube, a knee, another tube coming down, an ankle, and a foot. Her foot is in a high heel. It's elevated, right? So on the side view, I'm going to be able to see that elevation. Okay? So before you get into any contour line, you should be able to come in and look at your drawing, your translating, your three-quarter study, and you should just start with basic shapes. It shouldn't be anything more. Let's see what her foot was doing. Her foot was raising. Yeah. Now her legs were shortening back here. Okay? So take one of your characters. It's in a three-quarter view that you've already designed. And now you're gonna draw step one. You're gonna find the center line of it. That's what I like to do. Step two, because sometimes imagine if you had a character like a big gargoyle that's like this, and he's leaning forward, his center line body mass might be more like a C, right? 
So I, that's why I always start with the center line. It gives me a good idea of what their curve is doing on their body. And then I start with the shapes, okay? Start sketching the shape. While I'm sketching in the shape, I place in these measurement lines that are indicating the height of the head, okay, the shoulders, the hands, the knees, the ankles, and then uh, the, uh, those are the, you know, the hips, pelvic bones, and then I go for the secondary detail a little bit later once I get those shapes blocked in. What would secondary detail be? It might be the belt. Maybe the belt is higher on the right side than the left side, so I look at that. It might be the jacket detail. It might be the hat detail. Do not start this drawing like this. Don't be looking at it going, oh, I'm going to draw the hat now. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You have to have a core shape. You have to be able to look here and say, this is my, core, my character in three-quarter, and then translate these shapes right back over here by drawing lines, and I'm going to understand from a rear view that this height here is going to be the same height there. So that's my character's height there. And then I'm going to come back in. I understood that there was an arch here. In, her, in her, her upper body from her lower segment. I'm going to have that arch here. And then I know her waist ended there. So that's it. This is just shape right now. Okay. Draw the basic shape. Then we come on and start putting the line detail. And then we all walk around and I start to check to see where your character is on or off. And it's easy for you to check because it's like, once I get rid of this basic outline right here, and I come back to here, that's it. That's just the line drawing there that's correctly drawn. If you want to do this thing where you're wrapping little rubber bands around the legs or the arms, that's totally fine. If that allows you to see the form better, go for it. My general rule of thumb on that is that since this is an orthographic view, I pretend the line in the middle is the horizon line. So if I'm looking up on that, okay, now, and that's just my personal thing, technically, the right, I'm sort of looking down on here on her because I can see her shoulders. You don't have to do it that way, but I like to wrap, excuse me, let me get another lay there. I like to wrap lines like this over the form because it allows me to see through the object of the leg. It gives me a better representation of how the form of the leg might be happening. In this particular pose, her leg is coming towards us and then it's being foreshortened as it recedes back. And I know from my perspective background, that that's basically two cylinders stacked on top of each other, okay? So I know how to draw that. I know that there's one cylinder that starts here, it comes down, she has a round kneecap, then the other cylinder recedes away, okay? Start with the shapes. Draw your character in basic shapes first, and then come back. Yes, Anthony. So what, th that's a really great question because what you'll see is I prefer to do it like this. The arms are just straight out like this in the sample right here where there's sort of like, like at this V, you call it upside down V, right? I've, there are some shows where I have a sample of this. Sometimes like right here on Optimus Prime right here, do you see his arm gone? They take the arm off to show you what the side view looks like. And then sometimes you do another pass where you draw the arm as an overlay on top and then you have that on the side. That would be an option if you want to be really accurate and meticulous about it. Because yes, the arm is technically covering a spot there and depending on the detail of your character, your character might have a wardrobe, might have an outfit, might have a belt, a dagger, something there that the arm is covering. In that case, you can leave a round little hole for where the socket would be for the arm and then you can redraw the arm on the character as another layer next to it. Now I'm going to leave that up to you. Okay? If you're, Optimus Prime is a pretty detailed character. If you were to model him, you need to know that information, right? Um, when you look at some other samples, like this guy, look at that right there. They left the arm out. That's totally fine. Okay? That's where I would just do an overlay, and I sometimes I put the arm as a separate piece, especially if there's any information on the side of the arm that I can't see in the front or side views, okay? All right, any other questions regarding this? Remember, start with the center line. That helps you understand what your character is doing in three quarter. Bring a center line down the middle, almost like you're cutting them in half, not in some weird way, but you're basically figuring out where their masses are. And then from there, you find out their, the size of their head, their proportions, and you draw lines across, okay? 
and then you come in and you start roughing out the shapes that mimic the other shapes that are being existent in the, those views, and then you get these to come together. Um, and there are some things that change, you know, when sometimes in your three-quarter view, you can't see how pronounced that curve might be inside there. So those are little changes that, that happen sometimes. Okay, so um, anyway, that's the basics, okay? I'm going to include a couple of these samples because I don't want you to be confused. Everyone's here today, and so I want you to understand the first approach is this view only. It's an orthographic view. After this, your orthographic view will have all the information. Basically, you can even sometimes draw on top of the orthographic view and just change the feet as if they exist on a grid plane. Does that make sense? And that's why it's easier to do this approach first. Okay? This is what's going to be required of you by a company for professional work to do because someone's going to have to model that and a modeler is going to bring it up and work right out for your drawing. Okay? Any other questions about that? All right, I'll put samples up. You know where to start. I'll come around in the next class. I'll look at samples of your drawing to make sure you're getting the orthographic down. And then when we switch to the perspective view. The students that tend to have a really hard time with this are those of you that lack basic drawing principles and understanding of how to use and apply perspective. There's nothing I can do to really guide you along there. Some of you just lack those skills because you haven't had the proper amount of training and basic drawing skills or figure drawing to get that under your belt. Okay? All right. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Have fun.